couple of videos, we've explored cash flow forecasting and how a cash flow forecast can be a useful tool to the entrepreneur. We're now going to look in a little more detail at some potential cash flow problems that a business might face and how it might go about resolving these issues. As a reminder, a cash flow forecast looks at all the predicted cash coming into and going out of the business, and it predicts the cash balance at the end of each period, usually at the end of each month. Don't get a cash flow forecast confused with a cash flow statement, which instead looks at the actual cash flows in and out of the business, and it shows what that actual cash balance was at the end of each period. And this is completed after the fact, when the real information is really available. But this video is all about when things go wrong. So let's have a look at some of the reasons that businesses might end up with cash flow problems. Firstly, poor sales are one of the main causes of cash flow issues. If sales aren't as high as expected, then the business could end up with cash outflows that are bigger than its cash inflows, meaning, as we already know, a negative net cash flow. And if this carries on for long enough, well, the business might end up running out of cash completely and ultimately failing. Next up, some businesses, well, they just buy too much stock in the hope that they will eventually be able to sell it all. But if it doesn't sell, well, now they're stuck with it and they might have to reduce it in price or even, if it's perishable, end up destroying it. And this problem is more common if they are using a just-in-case stock management system, which involves keeping a buffer of stock just in case. And if they can't sell that stock and turn it into cash, well, then this could cause some cash flow problems. And one solution might be to look at a just-in-time approach instead, which we have covered in another video. Another issue might be the timing of payments and of receipts. If you're having to pay for your stock before you sell it, or if you have to wait before your customers pay your invoices, well, then this can cause cash flow problems, even if the business is profitable. A common reason that many businesses end up with cash flow problems is that they just haven't paid enough attention to it. They may not have prepared a cash flow forecast, or perhaps they've not done a very good job of it. This means that they've no real idea of what's going to happen, particularly if they are a business with big seasonal changes. What I mean here as an example is a calf at the seaside will have much higher sales in the summer holidays, but they will have costs all year round. A retail business might be busiest in the months leading up to Christmas and much quieter in other months of the year, but they will still have to pay for costs such as rent and wages. And this is why it's simply so important to understand cash flow. To all the teachers out there, show all of these videos without any ads and gain access to our growing library of over 500 teaching worksheets. Why not visit bizwizard.co.uk to find out more? So we've covered some of the reasons a business might have a cash flow problem, but what impact is this going to have on the business if they have these problems? Well, firstly, and most obviously, they might be left without enough cash to pay their running costs, including their workers' wages, and this will cause motivation issues, which could lead to low productivity or even staff walking out and going on strike. Another impact might be that if your suppliers get wind that there is cash problem, instead of trying to help you out, they may become wary of giving you business credit which might actually make the problem worse. So they might ask you to pay in 30 days instead of the usual 60 days. And if they are your main or even only supplier, well, this could be a huge problem. Another impact of a cash flow problem is that if a business does need to source some finance, well, this is going to come with a cost. Borrowing money from a bank means the business will have to pay interest. Short-term overdrafts can be very expensive, 
And if the business takes out a loan, it will eventually have to be paid out with interest on top. If instead they decide to raise money by issuing equity shares, well, this comes with a different type of cost. The impact here is a potential loss of control of the way that the business is run, as more shares are actually sold. So you can see that there are some significant impacts of cash flow problems, along with some potential costs, and it can be a slippery slope, but all is not always lost. So let's have a look at some of the possible solutions to cash flow problems. First of all, the business should make sure it's looked at all opportunities to increase its sales or to reduce its outgoings wherever possible. They might look at running a new marketing campaign to increase awareness and demand for the product. However, this is going to increase the costs for the business. Depending on the price sensitivity of your product or service, the business may also look at putting their prices up. Although we know that there's a danger that they may lose sales as a result. Some businesses, well, they may consider holding less stock, perhaps moving from a just-in-case approach to a just-in-time approach, meaning less money is actually tied up in stock. However, here there's a risk that they might run out of a certain product, which could damage sales and their brand reputation with customers. They could also look at rescheduling their payments, both the payments that they receive from their customers and the payments that they make to their suppliers. For example, they could ask their customers to pay in 30 days rather than giving them 90 days, which would speed up their cash inflow. However, they may end up losing sales by asking customers to pay so quickly. Another solution for some businesses might be to renegotiate their payment terms with their suppliers. For example, by increasing the days that they have to pay their invoices, or maybe by asking for a one-off delay to help them through a difficult month. However, keep in mind that this could damage the relationship with the supplier, so it needs to be handled carefully. Finally, as we've already discussed, they may also have to look at other sources of finance. An overdraft is typically pretty quick and easy to sort out, and it can be a good way of resolving a short-term cash problem. However, the interest rate can be much higher than a bank loan, and if the business is persistently overdrawn, then it might affect their credit rating and their ability to solve future cash flow problems. Now, before we go any further, it's time to look at an entrepreneur that's having some cash flow problems. Let's meet a familiar face. I have to admit that this is not the real Santa. He was busy, but this Santa has a grotto in a shopping center in the south of England. The grotto is only open between October and December, and Santa pays £3,000 a month rent for the grotto during these months. Santa buys toys to give to the children from a group of toy makers, and he buys them in September so that he knows he'll have all the best toys. He pays for the toys as soon as he receives them, and the cost of the toys is £50,000. Santa also hires a storage unit near the shopping centre between September and December at a cost of £2,000 per month, which he has to pay at the start of each of these months. He employs some elves on temporary contracts to help him out between September and December in his storage unit and at the grotto, and he pays these elves. They don't work for free. But although this particular Santa only operates his grotto in the winter, his operation has costs that he has to pay all year round. He has his own reindeers, and they need to be fed all year round. Although, they do eat a lot more in October, November and December when they're their busiest. He pays himself a monthly salary all year round. After all, he has to live, and it is a full-time job researching the latest trends in toys and gifts all year round. Santa uses the latest technology, so he has IT costs to pay every month. 
He also has year-round marketing costs, reminding potential customers that he's going to be there come the winter. So how does Santa make his money? Well, his sales revenue comes from tickets to his grotto. Parents buy the tickets for their kids to go and see Santa, and they buy these tickets from the shopping centre. And the shopping centre then pays Santa the following month. So he gets his sales receipts for October in November, and the ones for November in December, etc. Okay, so let's see what the problem really is. With all of this information, Santa pulls together his cash flow forecast for a full financial year. He expects to have £25,000 in his bank account at the start of April when his financial year begins. And this is what his current cash flow looks like. So you can see that Santa starts with £25,000 cash balance at the start of April. Bring this video and over a hundred more to life with fun, interactive games, quizzes and case studies. Why not try the first 25 completely free by visiting bizwizard.co.uk. However, Santa can see that he's got a problem. He is forecasting to have a negative cash flow every single month apart from November, December and January as these are the only three months where he actually has any cash flowing into his business. Because he started his year with £25,000 in the bank, well that keeps him going for a few months, but by September he's forecasting to run out of money, particularly as he's planning to pay that £50,000 to the toy makers in September before he's even received a penny in sale. And Santa's other cash outflows, well, they start to increase from September onwards. He's got elves wages to pay. He's got a storage unit to pay for. The reindeers are going to eat more food and he's ramping up his marking activity to draw more people into the grotto. In fact, his problem is so bad that poor Santa isn't forecasting to have a positive cash balance until January. Once he gets past that point, his bank balance will be healthy, right through to the end of the financial year. So what is this Santa going to do? Well, Santa's biggest problem is the timing difference between him paying the toy makers in September, but not receiving any sales receipts until November. And if you think about it, this means he doesn't receive his biggest month's sales receipts, the sales for December, until January. He's predicting that he'll have a negative cash balance from September right through to December. The worst month is October, where he's forecasting a negative cash balance of minus £71,050. That's a lot of money. Before Santa goes to talk to his bank manager at the North Pole Bank, he decides to look at what other options he might have to try and solve this cash flow problem. So Santa has a very good relationship with the shopping centre. He's had a grotto there every Christmas since it was built 50 years ago. He explains his cash flow problem to the manager, who is very understanding, and agrees to transfer the sales revenue for grotto tickets into Santa's bank account as soon as they're received. So as you can imagine, Santa is delighted with this news and decides to update his cash flow forecast to reflect the fact that his sales receipts will now come in a month earlier than he was previously forecasting. So you can see from Santa's updated cash flow forecast that it now shows that he's predicted to have a negative cash balance for only three months, from September through to November with the worst month being September, down at minus £54,800, which is still rather a lot of money. Each of the video courses over at bizwizard.co.uk also includes an interactive business case study that applies the knowledge learned to a real-world scenario. There are over 1,000 multiple-choice questions, each with detailed feedback, which test students' understanding of the content. Why not visit bizwizard.co.uk to find out more? 
So he solved one issue, but this hasn't really solved the problem. He's still more than £50,000 under for a few months. Where is Santa going to get this extra money from? Santa's main cash flow headache is now the fact that he's paying the toy makers in September when he takes delivery of the toys, but he doesn't actually get any sales receipts until October, November and December, with December being the biggest month. Now Santa's worked with these toy makers for more years than anyone can remember, and he has a very good relationship with them. You could say that he's their best customer. So Santa explains that most of the Grotto ticket sales, well, they don't come in until November and December. So he asks the toy makers, first of all, if they'll consider allowing him to pay them in December instead, as that would really help his cash flow. After a bit of haggling, the toy makers agree that Santa can pay £25,000 in November and £25,000 in December. So Santa once more updates his cash flow to reflect these new payments. He's pleased to see that it's made a really big difference to his cash flow forecast. He's now forecasting to have a positive cash balance in every month apart from September, where his predicted cash balance is minus £4,800, and October, where his predicted cash balance is minus £1,050. Santa is pretty confident that the bank manager will give him a short-term overdraft for these two months, and he makes an appointment to see him. Santa's planning to take the cash flow forecast that he's prepared and to explain what he's already done to deal with his cash flow problems. The bank manager happily agrees to the overdraft, which is a big relief to this Santa. And this means that he can pay all of his bills when agreed, particularly the elves' wages. The last thing he needs is them walking out on strike at the busiest time of year. So there you have it. This Santa has solved his cash flow problem. He has renegotiated with the shopping centre and the toy makers to ensure that his balance is as close to positive as possible all of the time. Importantly, the bank is now going to support him in those two months when cash flow is a little tight. So hopefully this will now be the end of all of Santa's cash flow headaches. Remember, there's never going to be a one size fits all way of dealing with cash flow problems. And what's best for Santa might not be the best for every other business. As an entrepreneur, you may experience your own cash flow problems in the future, and I wish you the best of luck in finding your own way of dealing with these issues. This has been The Biz Wizard. See you in the next video.